Howdy, how you doing? In this video, I'm gonna go over the top resource that I've used during pre-clerkship and my clerkship years during medical school. So I have eight amazing resources, link in the description. Make sure to watch the whole video, let's go. By the way, you're only as good as resources you use and how you use them. And to do that well, you have to focus. The first resource is gonna be Amboss. I absolutely love Amboss. I've been using it just during clerkship. This is what the dashboard looks like right here. Um, I haven't used it for too many questions, more so to look up information. So in the library section, you have basic sciences, clinical knowledge, which is helpful for OSCEs, survival, all that stuff. So the way I use this, they also have an app, which I can cover in another video, is that Amboss is a huge library. So example, if I am am on the war, I'm doing my internal medicine rotation, and I want to learn more about DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. I look it up on the app or on my computer or the iPad. Here's a quick summary, and this is all the information I need to know. So this is uh, the overview, pathophys, clinical features. So what does it look like? Polyuria, polydipsia, nausea, vomiting, rapid onset. But let's say you, there's too much information, right? You can toggle highlight on and off. You can also toggle the high yield features. So it actually Actually hide stuff that's a little bit too extra and you feel more of a clinician perspective you click here and it'll toggle here monitoring in this case and I'll toggle other things as well so I'll undo all that maybe I'll keep the highlight and so it has flow charts as well for how to treat algorithms anything you want they have here differentials from learning about strokes here it is, strokes, you have the definition. And the cool thing is they pair it up with some osmosis videos, which we'll actually cover soon. So the way I use this resource is I'll usually look at clinical features, go to diagnostics, understand what the algorithm is like, what do I order or how do I diagnose certain diseases, certain pathopathologies, what's a good differential, that's very important for like emergency, and then how to treat it, which is well needed. Over the last couple of days, I just finished my my final year OSCEs. So what I've been doing is I go to library, come up to clinical skills and do OSCE cases. So case one, abdominal pain. And here it is, you read a stem and then you practice. So you practice with a friend and they have a lines to, that you can say, and then you check it off. Your friend can check it off as you're going, or you just say it out loud and then you check off what you said. And I, at the end, it also tells you what the differential diagnosis can be and what studies you want to order next, which is extremely helpful. Some of the other plans or benefits of using AMBOSS that I did not take advantage are the study plans. That would be very helpful if I had more questions to use in the question bank. I paid for, I think, the minimum plan, which gives gives me 50 questions per month, and I just never ended up using them. So again, AMBOSS, highly recommend. I think everyone should start off with AMBOSS just to have an idea, and it's just all of medicine in your pocket in your phone once you have the app. Another neat feature is that it can track your progress with percentiles, show you where you're at and how you're improving and areas of weaknesses. And it has clerkship survival guides, on-call survival guides, and much, much more. Quickly looking at the price is it's $15 per month American. If you have a class representative, you can reach out and actually get a class discount. And that's how our class got it. And then you can add more questions by adding the full QBank access, which is gonna cost Cost some more money so you can increase there and it's going to be about 229.6 months unlimited use of QBanks. All right, on to the next resource. Next one is going to be UWorld, which most people know about, very popular for Caribbean medical students and the Americans. Here it tracks all your stats. <laughs> Those aren't good stats, but hey, the questions are hard, so they keep going. And then you come here to create a test, and UWorld does not tell you, you can't just look up diseases and the path of phys, diagnostics, and treatment, but it provides an immense amount of high quality questions. And at the end of each question, it has a very in-depth explanation. So if I go here to, uh, let's say emergency medicine, let's do one allergy immunology question. You set how many questions you want. Let's do this question really quickly. I'm just gonna click, but they're very dense paragraphs most of the time. So you get to learn pattern recognition. You do a quick skim. So you start out, what's the most appropriate next step? So that's what you're looking for. Do a quick skim, look at the vitals, see they have hives. Okay, I'm assuming this person 
has uh, some type of obviously an allergic reaction because that's what he clicked. So I'm gonna say intramuscular epinephrine, 61%. And then if you mess up or you get it right, you get the explanation. So then if you wanna make flashcards, take a screenshot of this, put in a flashcard if you messed up, and it has a great explanation of why that's the answer. And it tells you why each of other multiple choices were wrong. And it gives you the objective of this question and some resources. So I really like UWorld, extremely expensive, not sure why. I guess it's because they know you'll pay, but definitely a resource worth doing and many people use it. Price wise, I bought this step two CK question bank and I did buy it for, I believe 360 days. So this 539 and unfortunately I haven't been using it too much, but it has been helpful when I have used it. So maybe you want to think diligently about this resource. Price wise, I'd send you over to Amboss because they're a lot, more, a lot cheaper and provide uh, big in-depth questions as well. Okay, so the next resource is one that I haven't used too much, but I discovered it from a resident during my OBSGYN rotation, OBGYN, and also surgery. I think it was actually during my orthopedic surgery rotation. And if you type in teachmesurgery.com, teachmeobgyn.com, teachmepediatrics.com, you'll get to this website. Here it's a teachmeseries.com. So why this is helpful is if you click surgery, you go to teachmesurgery.com, the question bank, I haven't used it, haven't looked it up, but let's say you're an ortho. These are the high yield topics that you will see. And so a very common one might be like a clavicle fracture that you have to know about. So you click that, introduction gives you the type one, two, three type of fracture, the image, pathophys, clinical features, differentials, investigations, and then management. So, and then the key point. So very quickly, you pull this up on your phone, just search it up on Google. At your fingertips, you will have high yield information about important topics. So ENT as well, nose bleeding, epistasis. Come here. If you know you're gonna get pimped on this, maybe the morning of, you can quickly look it up. Or if you're gonna see a patient with some of these features, uh, these diseases or problems, you look it up and then you're good to go. And this is completely free. I have no idea about the question bank, so let's find out here. Looks like you have to be a subscriber. But anyways, highly recommend this. If we go back to the Teach Me uh, series here, click. OBGYN, teach me OBGYN, you click gynecology and then find primary dysmenorrhea, very common topic, and then here you go. Okay, so that is the next. Okay, so that is the third resource, very helpful, highly recommended. Before we continue to the fourth resource I recommend, I wanna welcome you back. My name is Tiago Lizvargi. I am a fourth year medical student now. And if you like the content so far, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video. And if you have any questions about resources or anything medical school related, drop it in the comments. I respond to every single comment. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Let's continue. So the next resource is actually called Dynamic. Med. And I believe because we're U Auto students, we get access to this through our email. So this is another one that I use mostly in pediatrics just because that's when I learned about it. But you type in whatever you want to look up, right? So acute abdominal pain in adults. And on the side, you see the etiology and pathogenesis or pathophys, history and physical, diagnostic testing and management. That's mostly what you're going to use as a clerkship student or even a pre-clerkship student that you want to understand. So you find know I'm going to see some be in the emergency room with abdominal pain. I'm going to pull this up, look it up and see, okay, what do I need to focus on? Things that I'm thinking about is acute appendicitis, peptic ulcer disease, acute gastritis, and so on. This is the differential. And it also suggests things that you can ask. So you can talk about, ask about fever, vomiting, jaundice, the yellowing of their skin and so on. Huge differential here. Severe diseases, these indicators. So if they have, they're passing out, they're lightheaded, then you got to worry a little bit more. So on history, you're going to ask about location, radiation, movement or pain, quality of pain, onset severity or OPQRST. Ask about past medical history and you can see how it really spoon feeds you all the questions you want to ask and things you should be focusing on. Medication history, steroids, NSAIDs right here, non-steroid anti-inflammatories for that peptic ulcer disease for any GI bleeding, social history, associated symptoms and so on. Then you're like oh dude like I know how to do the, the history, I know the questions to ask easy but 
what do I do on a physical exam? And the next part is that. So general observation, look for infection, tachycardia, hypotension, look at the vitals. Abdomen exam, you wanna do inspection, so look for skin changes, you can do palpation, this is what you're gonna palpate, and then you go to percussion, auscultation, and special maneuvers. So Murphy sign for acute cholecystitis. So this is a great resource, again, that depending on the school that you go to, you might have this for free, or you can also pay for a subscription and then you can use this throughout the year. Next on the list is Geeky Medics. You've probably seen this if you're a med student, but if you look up on YouTube, how to prepare for any OSCE, you're gonna see their video and they're very helpful. I primarily use them for OSCE scenario preparations. So if you come up to cases, they have OSCE stations and uh, you can practice through these. They have amazing videos, but I also noticed that they have cover other topics like surgery, wound healing. So another data bank of resources of how to just study and understand each topic better. Clinical examination, cardiovascular. So if you want to perfect your cardiovascular exam, how to measure the JVP, what do heart murmurs sound like? So if you click that, got the intro cardiac cycle, it's going to have graphs. And so it's very educational. And up here, you can see they have over 600 OSCE stations. They have quizzes, they have flashcards for OSCEs, and it's extremely helpful. I just found this out a couple of minutes ago about interpretation. So if you need to work on your ECG interpretation skills, your radiology interpretation skills, and all of this, you can click radiology here, come to a hip x-ray interpretation guide, and then it's gonna tell you foundationally what you need to know, or fundamentally, has images, and then practice. So you look for a Shenton's line here, and so on. So this is an amazing free resource that you can use right here. They have flashcards for the OSCE. So if you're preparing for OSCE or just study in general, this is a great resource to use. The next one, this is what I used during my pre-clerkship year. So for years one and two, I recommend Osmosis. For years three and four, I recommend Amboss. If you got money to spend, then you can just buy whatever you want. Other than that, be very diligent with your money. I don't have a membership to Osmosis uh, now, but these are some of the things that they have. This is from a website here. They have over 1800 videos. Basically, they're cartoonish drawings, whiteboard drawings, explaining each pathophysiology of certain diseases and how to treat it, how to diagnose it. And they have great questions and flashcards to study. And I would often do them leading up to an exam to get me prepared. So I recommend you take a look at that. Look up their videos, they have free videos on YouTube as well. And last but not least, I don't have an image where I can't share this, but it is use your student notes resources. So if you have upper year students that have looked at all the objectives for your program, then make sure that you use them because uh, they're exactly what you need to know. They're organized and and they're most likely free and they're bare bones minimum of what you need to know. And to be honest, for the, for the most part during clerkship, I would be using notes or flashcards made by students and then occasionally be using resources like Amboss to fill in the gaps or while I'm working, I quickly search disease up so I can study on the spot. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like this video, then click here and you'll love this one.